Hello and welcome back uh, to Dr. Monroe's Material Science videos. In this video we're going to be talking about secondary bonding. So unlike primary bonding, secondary bonding is not about how electrons have uh, are moving around and being tied or not tied to specific atoms or molecules. Secondary bonding is all about once those electrons have moved, what types of forces are created. And these are referred to as van der Waals forces. Some people refer to them kind of like hydrogen bonding because hydrogen has a tendency to do this when it bonds with other molecules. So within there, there are kind of three main types of van der Waals bonds. Um, we're only going to discuss two of those types. So one of them we will call, or is called, the keysome force. And the other one is called the London dispersion force. And these are actually named after people, so these are names. London is not the place, it's the name. So in a keystone force, what happens is um, dipoles are created, typically from the primary bond called covalent bonding, and those dipoles will interact with each other. So uh, one of our examples from primary bonding was water, H2O. So if I have a water molecule with one oxygen and two hydrogen, we know from primary bonding that there's a specific angle, that those hydrogens are held at a specific angle between, uh, or at a specific angle in relationship to one another. What that ends up doing is it creates a positive charge on this side of the molecule and a negative charge on this side of the molecule. And if you look at it, what it ends up doing is creating this kind of dipole like this. Well, if we have another water molecule with an oxygen and two hydrogens, we'll see exactly the same thing. So in this case, it'll be positive here, it'll be negative down here, and it'll have a dipole that kind of looks like this. Well, we know that dipoles will interact with each other. There'll be forces that attract them. So the positive side is attracted to the, sorry, the negative side is attracted to the positive side, and the positive sides repel each other. And so this right molecule will rotate to align itself with the other water molecule. Now, a London dispersion force is not about dipoles that are already there. So, so a keysome uh, interaction has to do with dipoles that have been created and are called permanent. So the only way to destroy this dipole is to rip the hydrogens from this oxygen molecule, or from this oxygen atom. In the London dispersion force, we have um, induced dipoles. So how do you induce a dipole at the atomic level? Well, if you have an atom, such as argon, for instance, so you have two argon atoms at room temperature. At room temperature, this material is a gas. And if you looked at the, um, at the electron cloud, what you'd see is kind of a very symmetric electron cloud around the nucleus of the atom. So that nucleus is positively charged. 
Oops, not one. That nucleus is positively charged. And the gas is negatively charged. The, the electron um, cloud, rather, is negatively charged. And I'm drawing it as a sphere just to, to kind of um, show that it's you know symmetrical around that nucleus. Of course, you'll have all the different orbitals that we talked about when we discussed the electron configuration. Well, when we were talking about electrons, we also said that the reason electrons move is because of heat. Now, what would happen if we start turning down the temperature on an atom with a perfectly filled electron shell? Well, what happens is that electron cloud is no longer symmetric around the nucleus. It can kind of list to one side, or it's like a deflated balloon. And so what happens is you will have the positive nucleus, and the electron cloud will kind of be misshapen at very low temperatures. So if we lower the temperature, this is what will happen. And so now we have a positive charge of the nucleus, and we have a negative charge of the electron cloud. Well, what that will do is this just randomly happens to one atom as we start decreasing the temperature. And what happens is this one atom becomes a dipole. So now we have a dipole right here. Well, this dipole will in turn create dipoles of the atoms that surround it. So it'll actually pull the nucleus of this neighboring atom over to one side. And the electron cloud will, um, will shift in much the same way as its neighboring atom and become elongated. And now we have another dipole that is sitting next to um, this, uh, this other atom, this other dipole. And so this is called an induced dipole. And this uh, dipole induction is actually what liquefies all noble gases. So you can have liquid nitrogen, liquid argon, liquid xenon. Um, and these are created by decreasing the temperature and then getting these uh, dipoles to become induced. And then the atoms start to stick together in a liquid-like and become a liquid.